if an artificial intelligence were to rule the world? I mean, it could happen in a distant future. This idea spiraled into me creating the 3D animated short film, Afro Algorithms. I see storytelling as a vehicle to share important new perspectives, highlight issues, and build worlds entirely different than our own. Through animation, I got to create an Afrofuturist fantasy world of my own design. Since I had the crazy idea of telling the story, I first had to get clear on what artificial intelligence was and what an algorithm even means. One of my favorite definitions of this is one by Kathy O'Neill, which I used to start the film. It says, algorithm, using historical information to make a prediction about the future. This quote is from the documentary Coded Bias on Netflix, which was a huge inspiration to me while writing the script for this project. I also love the quote because it makes it clear how AI and algorithms are a reflection of the past especially because when it comes to people of color in America, we're often focusing on the histories of discrimination, othering, and dehumanization. I wouldn't want an algorithm to see more of that in its crystal ball. There are many examples of algorithms perpetuating history's biases. That's why Microsoft's AI became racist from being exposed to Twitter data, why Amazon's hiring tool became sexist against female applicants, and why facial recognition algorithms have the highest error rates for black women than any other demographic. So, in Afro algorithms, Arrow is programmed with the knowledge of every great leader in history to help her make decisions. Or at least that's what she's been led to believe. When I designed the city for Alpha Algorithms, I knew I wanted to focus on this central dome that Arrow and her lead scientist, Miriam, live inside of. In the beginning, I was obsessed with the city being in an oasis in the middle of a vast desert. But after I saw the initial prototype of this idea, I decided to put the city on this circular disc floating in space. When we enter the city, the first character we see is the skater boy. He stands on a hoverboard and spray paints Deport AI onto the side of a building. Now, I'm from New York City, and despite your political views, the streets of New York City between 2016 to 2020 were covered in Deport Trump graffiti. And that's why I wanted to use it to illustrate the division of the world we are entering. Just in this world, it's between the supporters of the League of Human Intelligence and the Federal Artificial Intelligence Council. They say to write what you know, and so I included many personal details in the story. For instance, the lead scientist character is named Miriam because my mom's middle name is Miriam. The outcast who lives in the forest is named Dr. Richards because my dad's middle name is Richard. The skater boy was designed to look like my little brother, Ian, and as for me, well, I'm the human version of Arrow. Creating black characters in 3D animation is an undertaking. There's typically not a lot of options in 3D asset databases for black hair and features. That's why when I saw the work of Nigerian-based animator Duru Azabuke, I thought his style and expertise would perfectly enhance the project. So I slid into his DMs on Instagram and he and his team at Magic Carpet Studios truly blew the animation out of the park. We first started with designing Arrow. I knew I wanted her to have an upside down U on her forehead that was blue, kind of like Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender. Next, we designed Miriam. I knew I wanted her to have locks that fell out of these cylindrical hair accessories. And I also added three tiny little studs to each of her ears. Then we designed Dr. Richards. I initially drew him as having a hunchback and looking kind of like Jafar from Aladdin when he was in disguise. The actors who voiced the characters in the film also played a huge role in bringing the film to life. Ava Rain not only voiced Arrow, but sang the song that opens and closes the film, called The Gold. The lyrics of her song go, It's time to rule the world. It's time to paint the world gold. 
When I heard these lyrics, there was no doubt in my mind that the song had to go into the film. Not only is it time for Arrow to rule the world, but it's time for her and all of us to paint it gold. To me, painting the world gold means transforming the world into what it has the potential to be. And that's exactly what Arrow learns to do. Robin Quivers is the voice of Miriam, and Robin has the most iconic voice from being a longtime host of The Howard Stern Show. She also adds some doses of humor to her lines. Some of my favorites are, anyway, anyways, let's, let's take, take it, from, it from, the from the top. And you're, you're not going, going anywhere. Hoji Fortuna is an Angolan actor who voiced Dr. Richards. He brought so much to this role with his booming laughter and dramatic pauses. I really can't imagine a film without him. In the very first scene with the science lab, Miriam is very endearing towards Arrow, Brilliant. like a mother would be to a child. She's like one of those moms who thinks their kid is the best thing to have graced the face of the earth. Thankfully, Arrow does what any teenager would do, goes against her mother's wishes. In Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey, which is the global blueprint for the journey that every hero goes on, there's a stage where they step into the unknown. For Arrow, it is right here when she jumps off of the city's edge. She free falls through the clouds into the unknown. The Enchanted Forest represents the mystery and beauty in the unknown. When Arrow looks around the forest for the first time, there's no signal. I specifically went into the script and added this detail after reading the book Artificial Unintelligence by Meredith Broussard. In the book, she points out that people often have unrealistic expectations about how seamless, perfect, and advanced technology actually is. In reality, technology constantly glitches, malfunctions, and has to be rebooted. I mean, just think of how much of a dud Siri can be sometimes. When Arrow finally meets Dr. Richards, it's like Arrow meeting her estranged father for the first time. I also never knew my biological father growing up, but was raised by my stepdad who the character is named after. Even though Dr. Richards was named after my dad, he really acts more like my mom. She always saw through society's narratives and would tell me things that opened my way of seeing. So without her reprogramming society's limited narratives, I wouldn't be who I am today. And that is exactly what Dr. Richards does here for Arrow. Look at me. What do you see with that little algorithm of yours? In the Jim Crow era in the United States, when blacks and whites had different bathrooms, water fountains, and seating areas, there were countless activists who would be thrown in jail for defying these segregation laws and standing up for what was right. This turned them into criminals in the eyes of the law, even though what they were doing was in the name of liberation. That's why Arrow says, given, given your, your history, history, we can, we predict, can predict you will be, you a, will danger be a danger in the, in the future. This plays out in real life in the algorithms used to help the police identify criminals. Take the story of Robert Williams, a black man in Detroit who was wrongfully accused by an algorithm. The police showed up at his front door in front of his wife and kids and arrested him when he was actually entirely innocent. Arrow could easily be the next algorithm to make a mistake like this. That's why Dr. Richards says, Nothing about this will ever change unless the technology, unless you, Arrow, change. The data center scene was inspired by Kida in the Crystal Cave from Disney's Atlantis. In the scene, the knowledge from Pan-African leaders lifts Arrow into the air, just like magic crystal powers did in the Atlantis scene. For this, I created my own leader database. When researching what leaders to include, I called up my friend who was teaching Pan-African studies. We nailed down real world leaders who dedicated their lives to doing good, but were still considered controversial. A perfect example of this is Asada Shakur. She dedicated her life to the Black Liberation Army, yet to this day is still wanted by the FBI.
From one angle, she is a powerful leader, and from the other, she is a criminal. If you scroll through the shot slowly, the first leader that comes into view is Ya Asentiwa, a Ghanaian queen who empowered women and girls in the late 18, early 1900s. If you look into the background, you will see Steve Biko, a South African apartheid activist, Mildred Loving, whose court case, Loving vs. Virginia, legalized interracial marriage in the United States, revolutionary authors like Bell Hooks and Frantz Fanon, musicians like Fela Kuti and Bob Marley, and activists like Toni Morrison, Angela Davis, and Maya Angelou. The second time we scroll through Air's database, a leader floats by whose graphic is a little bigger than the others, and this is the one and only Joy Boalamwini. Watching her TED Talk, about how she's fighting bias in algorithms made me feel like there was a need and a space for this story. Our planet has come a long way, but without the use of imagination, vision, and creativity, no change will come. When I was rehearsing this final scene with my actors over Zoom, they had some fun with this final line between Miriam and Dr. Richards. Robin Quivers went, what are you doing here? And Dr. Richards turns to her and says, nice to see you too. This wasn't in the script, but it was too perfect and funny. So I added it in and it made it into the final piece. I believe that imagination is the greatest tool of humanity. If you look around you, everything that was created first had to be imagined. We are living in a time when our future is being threatened. We are facing environmental devastation, growing inequality, and displacement. That's why now more than ever, it is so important that we utilize this tool to imagine a future we truly want to see. My hope is that everyone watching the film walks away feeling like their imaginations were ignited to visualize new futures. I hope that we can all learn something from Arrow and take a closer look at our own social and cultural programming to rewrite scripts that are no longer serving us. We are the creators of the world of tomorrow. It is our job to reprogram the future, to create a world that works for people and the planet, one that is sustainable and equitable. It's time for us to take our paintbrush and paint the world gold.